thank you. And congratulations on your purchase of an X15 multi-tracker from Fostex. The world's leading maker of recording equipment for musicians and songwriters. This manual will guide you through the setup, features, and basic recording techniques used to make stereo and multi-track recordings on the X15. We've tried to follow the same basic flow of your written instruction manual. We suggest that you use the written manual and the X15 itself as cross-references to the videotape. At various places on the video, you'll see this. These are good stopping points for you to pause the videotape and try what we've shown you on the X-15 or refer back to the regular manual. Remember, this is a videotape, so feel free to skip sections or stop and replay something you're not clear on. In the next section, we'll unpack the X-15 and examine the parts and pieces that come with it. In the box, you will find the X15, 10 C-cell 1.5 volt batteries, the battery pack, a carrying strap, a warranty registration card, an instruction manual, and a quick reference guide for recording on the X15. The first thing to do is to load the battery pack. With the screw heads facing out, press the tab and lift out the battery cover. Place the 10 batteries in the pack making sure that the batteries are all facing in the direction indicated on the embossed picture next to the battery cover. Attach the battery pack to the X15 with the power switch on the same side as the cassette door. Lightly tighten the attachment screws with your fingers or a coin. Remember, don't over tighten. Turn on the power switch on the back of the battery pack. The meter should flash and the power indicator light on the X15 will stay lit. As an alternative, you can purchase the optional Model 8070 power adapter so that you can plug the X15 directly into the wall AC. The X15 is actually very easy to understand if you first think of it as a hi-fi cassette machine with some extra features. Over here is the cassette transport section. The cassette door lifts manually and the cassette inserts with the tape facing you. You'll find a familiar looking tape counter plus record, play, rewind, fast forward, stop and pause keys. As you experiment with the keys you'll find there is one difference from a regular cassette. When you press the oversized record key it also engages the play key and the machine begins to record. The convenience of this will become evident as we begin to make multi-track recordings. Be sure to use a blank cassette for your experiments. To learn basic recording on the X15, attach the line-out jacks located on the side of the X15 to an ordinary receiver's tape play jacks and the receiver's record-out jacks to the X15's line-in jacks. Again, this is just like connecting a regular hi-fi cassette machine. Put the receiver on phono and play a favorite record. On the X15 you can choose to record line inputs like the ones we just connected or microphone inputs that plug into the front of the X15. To choose which input you'll be recording use the input selector to choose between mic or line. Remix is a special feature that will be covered later. Bring the input faders up. Notice that the record level indicator goes up and down with the controls. Since the LED meters are very fast, set the input controls so that the red LEDs come on every so often. You've now set the correct record level. Move the record track selector to record on tracks 1 and 2. Be sure to fully engage these switches or the machine may not record properly. Reset the digit counter and press the record key. And there you have it. You're now recording on the X15. But wait a minute you still don't hear anything. That's because like any recording studio the X15 provides you with the ability to separate what you're listening to from what you're recording. There's a little four channel stereo mixer built into the X15. That's this section up here. Since we're recording on tracks one and two we'll use the monitor mixer channels one and two to set up our listening volume. Please note 
When I turn the monitor or listening level up or down, I'm not affecting my recording level, the volume that I'm sending to the tape recorder itself. The knob below the monitor mix gain is the pan control. It allows you to place a track or part anywhere in the stereo spectrum from the left side to the right side. For an ordinary stereo recording like we're making here, channel 1 should be set all the way to the left and channel 2 all the way to the right. Now stop the X15. Rewind the tape to zero and press play. We're now listening back to the recording. As a quick review of how to set up and record on the X15, choose the line or mic input. Adjust the input fader so that the meter reads correctly. Select the track you want to record onto. First press the pause key, then the record key. Turn up the mon mix on the record channels and pan appropriately. Zero the digit counter and release the pause. So far, we've used the X15 as a stereo cassette machine. But that's only the beginning. In the next section, we're going to make some multi-track recordings. The X15 is much more than a great stereo cassette deck. It's a four-track multi-channel recorder designed to allow you to record and create live music and make demos. Unlike a regular hi-fi cassette, all four tracks on the X15 can be accessed, recorded or played. The most dramatic demonstration of this is to play a pre-recorded cassette. Put the record track selectors in the center safe position. Turn all the monitor mix gains down to zero. Put the pan pots in a left-right, left-right configuration and press play. Now bring up Mon Mix 1 and 2. It sounds just like what you'd expect. Turn down 1 and 2 and bring up 3 and 4. What you're hearing is the other side of the tape playing backwards. On the X15 we can use all four tape tracks to make recordings. To demonstrate this we're going to make a six-part recording. A drum machine, bass, rhythm guitar, percussion, and two synthesizer tracks. We'll go through the procedure step by step, but first, zero the machine. This means putting all the knobs and dials into a standard starting position. This procedure is very valuable, since it gets you back to the same starting place every time. Anytime you get confused, you can zero the machine and get yourself back on familiar turf. First of all, Mon Mix gains down. All pan pots center. Input select to mic. Now this is arbitrary. It could be line, but we'll use mic. Input faders down. Treble and bass control center. Record track center. Put the headphone volume in the center and make sure your pitch control is centered. Now we'll lay down our first track, the drum machine which we previously programmed with our demo tune. The drum machine has a line level output, so we'll plug it into line in A on the X15. Once you're hooked up, switch channel A input selector to line. Start the drum machine. Now bring up the input faders until you get a good record level reading. Select your record track, one in this case, and press pause and record. Bring up Mon Mix 1. Listen to the sound of the drums. Adjust the tone controls to suit your taste. We'll boost the treble a little in this case. Now reset the drum machine to the beginning, reset the digit counter on the X15, and release pause. Start the drum machine. We're now recording on track one. Notice that we programmed four intro beats into the drum machine. This is called a count off. It lets you know where the tune starts as you begin to lay down other parts. After the drums are recorded, and this is very important, put record track A in the center safe position. This will keep you from accidentally erasing the drum track later. Rewind the tape to zero and press play. You should be able to hear the drums you just recorded. Next we're going to record the bass. To keep things straight, we're going to zero the machine again. 
Now, instead of miking an amplifier, we'll record our bass by plugging it directly into a mic input jack on the X15. Since we're going to be recording it on track 2, we'll go into mic in B and switch input select B to the mic position. By playing the bass and bringing up the input fader, I'm going to set the record level. I'm going to select record track 2, put the X15 record and pause, turn up mon mix 2 so I can hear, adjust the tone control on B, and release pause. Now set the headphone balance between the drums and the bass with mon mix 1 and 2. Use the headphone level control to adjust the overall level up and down. It might be helpful at this point to use the pan control to pan the drum part partway to the left and the bass partway to the right. That'll help you separate what you're listening to from what you're recording. Rewind the X15 to zero and press record. Record the bass part until you're satisfied with your performance. When you're finished, put the record track selector to safe. Rewind and press play. Use Mon Mix to set a pleasing balance between the bass and the drums. Without resetting Mon Mix, zero the rest of the X15. This time, we're going to record a guitar. To get that overdrive distortion sound, we're going to mic the guitar amplifier. Since we're planning on recording the guitar onto track 3, we'll plug the mic cord into mic in A. Put the input selector on A to mic. Play the guitar and set the input fader to a good record level. Switch record track A to 3. Press pause and record. Bring up monitor mix 3 and release pause. If you're satisfied with both the monitor and the record levels, rewind the X15 to zero and lay down the track. Time to show you another great feature of the X15 called punching in. If you're recording the guitar part and it's perfect except for the last three bars, you can keep the first part and punch the X15 into record just at the last section. Since your hands are going to be busy playing the guitar, we recommend the optional model 9060 foot switches. Connect one bulb to the punch in jack on the front of the X15 and the other to the punch out jack. Rewind the tape to a few bars before the punch in point. Remember record track A is still selected to 3. A handy tip is to play along before you get to the punch in point and at the appropriate time, step firmly on the bulb. If you only want to insert for a section, then step on the punch-out bulb at the appropriate point. Because we want to add three more parts, we're going to use another special feature of the X15, the ability to ping-pong or submix. In plain English, we're going to blend the drums, the bass, and the guitar into a pleasing mix and record the results on our open fourth track. That's what the remix position on the input selector is for. First, let's zero the machine. Since we're going to record onto track four, input selector B goes to remix. Bring the input fader into the gray area and select track four to record. Press pause and record. In remix, we can send the first three tracks to input B by using mon mix pans 1, 2, and 3 and turning them all the way to the right. If we wanted to send them to A, we would turn them to the left. Now release pause. Bring up the drums from track 1, blend in the bass on 2, and the guitar on 3 using the mon mix gains. When a pleasing blend is reached, rewind the tape and press record. The blend is now being recorded on track 4. When the process is finished, put record track 4 into the safe position. Zero the machine. Now bring up only mon mix on four. This is what the recorded blend sounds like on playback. If you're satisfied, continue with the next part. Next, we're going to record the percussion and the two synthesizer parts. We're going to record these on tracks one, two, and three since the parts we recorded on those tracks earlier have all been submixed onto track 4. The procedure is exactly the same. 
except this time we leave mon mix on track 4 up. It's time for mixing down into stereo. After zeroing the machine, attach the line outputs of your X15 to the record inputs on a second cassette machine or open reel recorder. This machine will act as the mastering deck. The output of the second recorder should be connected to a stereo system for monitoring. Remember, the better the system you're listening to, the more accurately you'll be able to judge your results. We're going to blend the sounds stored on the four tracks of the X15 into a pleasing stereo mix. First, set the record track selectors to the center safe position. Set both input selectors to remix. Both tone controls to center. Bring the two main faders up into the gray area. Rewind the X15 to the beginning of the tune and press play. You're going to be using the Mon Mix section to blend the sounds together. Bring up the tracks one by one till you get a pleasing mix. Use the pan controls to place the tracks in the stereo spectrum. Your own taste will be your guide. Check the LED meters on the X15 to make sure that they're set to the right level. If they're high, then bring down the two main faders. If they're low, increase the levels on the Mon Mix controls until you're in the right ballpark. Once the tune sounds right to you, rewind to the beginning and get ready to record on the mix down machine. First you have to set the record input levels. This will vary from model to model. On most cassette recorders, you press record, play and pause. If there's a mic line input selector, be sure to have it in the line position. Put the X15 into play. Now adjust the record levels on the mix down machine until it reads correctly. Again, rewind the X15. Start recording on the mix down deck and put the X15 into play. You're now recording the composite blend onto the mix down recorder. Now that we've covered the basics, here are some tips and tricks that will help you get the most out of your X15. Always use high quality recording tape, like TDKSA or other high bias tapes. The sound quality of your recording will only be as good as the tape that you use. Keep it clean. Do what you want with your lyrics, but use a cotton swab and head cleaner to keep the tape oxides off the tape heads and tape path. Learn to set the proper record levels. For instance, sounds with sharp attacks should be recorded slightly lower. But in general, record as loud as you can without distortion. If your tapes are recorded at too low a level, they'll sound hissy. If they're recorded at too high a level, they'll sound distorted. Be certain that the record select switches are fully engaged. If they're not, the tape transport can get stuck. The X15 has a pitch control feature that allows you to vary the play or record speed by plus or minus 15 percent. This is very useful for tuning the X15 to a fixed pitch instrument like a piano. It can also be used for special effects and creating interesting new sounds. Check that the pitch control is in the center click position before recording so that you can be sure the X15 is in a normal speed mode. Get into the habit of recording pitch references at the head of each recording so that you can tune each instrument to the track or the track to a new instrument. If you play synthesizer, record your reference pitch at a zero level so you can use it later to calibrate the record input on your mix down machine. If you're recording acoustic instruments using microphones, experiment with microphone placements to change tone color of the sound before you decide to use the electronic tone controls the results are much more pleasing. Many home recordings start to sound muddy as more instruments are added because of a tendency to record too much bass. Good drum bottom and good bass bottom and good guitar bottom adds up to too much bottom. Use the bass tone controls as you record to compensate for this. Get good labeling habits. Keep a log of what you've recorded on each cassette. It's easy to get real sloppy about this but over time it's worth it, honest. And get in the habit of putting the record track selector into the center safe position as soon as you've finished recording a part.
neat things to do. Become an instant radio programmer. You can use your X15 to make audio productions as well as musical demos. Use tracks 1 and 2 to lay down a cut from your favorite record. Then use tracks 3 and 4 for another fade. Lay them down so that you can cross fade from one to the other. You can even add your voice to be your own DJs. Buy some sound effects records and make your friends the wackiest phone answering messages in the world. Hello, I'm out of the house for a bit. Take the X-15 with you to record a special event. Then add background music to create a wonderful moment. An audio portrait that would make a cherished gift. Record something on track one. Turn the tape over. Hear it play backwards on track four. Now add regular parts for an interesting effect. There are a number of handy Fostex accessories that make life easier and give you better recorded sound. The Model 8070 power adapter, so you can plug the X15 directly into an AC circuit. The Model 9060 remote foot switches, for hands off punching in and punching out. The Model 9021, a handy gig bag for your X15 and its accessories. The TT15 test tone generator for people who don't have a synthesizer to put test tones on their tapes. The MN50, a battery powered compact 5x1 mixer that can blend your three tape tracks with additional line and mic inputs to add extra parts during ping ponging. Better yet, the MN50 has a built in variable compressor circuit for that tight, punchy sound. Great for vocals, bass, and sustained guitar sounds quality recording microphones like the M2, M3, and M5. The renowned Fostex Studio headphones, the T20s. The 6301 powered monitors. Great sounding reference speakers with their own built-in amplifier. Just plug a pair of line outs into them and turn up the volume. The Model 3180 stereo reverb to add space and dimension to your sound. The Model 3050 digital delay for effects from chorus to slap echo. The very clever Fostex 4-channel coded cables that keep your input and output wiring nice and neat. And the Fostex information service of helpful how-tos and practical guides for recordists, musicians, and songwriters. The leading reference books in the industry from Breaking into the Music Business by Alan Siegel to Making Music by George Martin to How to Make and Sell Your Own Records by Diane Rappaport, plus many more. These books are available from your local Fostex dealers or call us direct in California. So welcome to the world of home recording, a creative art for your music and more. The X-15 can act as a handy musical notebook, it can help you practice your performance and expand your creative horizons. We're happy that you chose Fostex, and we wish you the best of good music and the best of good times.